Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And I thank you for coming through for another session, another time to get together. Amen. Let me just adjust this chair. I'm always adjusting chairs here. And um, I thank you for coming through to the Morning Devo. Uh, my name is Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And these are the Blaze Bible Studies. These are the Morning Devo editions. Amen. And we're in a series that I decided um, to tackle Amen. And it's like Jesus is showing up so much. That's why a lot of Jesus is being spoken lately on these morning devos, because I wanted to know why Jesus would say a thing, because the question in the culture um, that's outside of the kingdom of God, they want to know, why would he say, how dare he say that? Why would he say that? Who does he think he is? That type of thing. So if Jesus said something, amen, I noticed that when Jesus says a thing, it is a thing, right? And it becomes a topic. It becomes a matter. It, it offends people. You know, it just let's just say the truth. It offends people. Others, it intrigues people. Others cause themselves to ask more questions about life. And others go and seek him and follow him and get saved by him and live a life for him. Amen. Uh, I fell into that category of like asking, you know, calling God out and he, him coming into my life, saving me. And then now I follow him and I'm living for him and through him. Amen. So, you know, there's two sides of the of the stick. Right. And two sides of the story. Either you follow Jesus or you don't. Either you believe in what he said or you don't. Amen. And it's a decision that we need to make daily. Right. On a day to day basis. But we're finding out what Jesus says. So Jesus quotes his Old Testament book. Let's see if it applies today. And I'm naming this one deeper obedience, deeper obedience. Amen. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter five, verses 38 to 42. Sister Joanne, good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the morning devos. Good to see you, my sister and my friend. And I got the message from my wife that you sent about um, some of those um, sweaters and apparel that I'll be wearing. Um, amen. So I could get you to one of them, which is one of my sponsors. Uh, and I'll put it in the chat later on. It's djsamrock.com forward slash strong. djsamrock.com forward slash strong. And those are one of my sponsors, amen, for the Morning Devo. Um, and I could get you to the local uh, brethren that make these um, hoodies and sweaters. And I could direct you to them as well. Right? Share the love. Spread the love. So Jesus said, what? This is number 22. Deeper obedience, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. Oh, man. And Jesus, it's like when Jesus says a thing, it's like mics drop all over the place. He drops truth bombs. Amen. And since Jesus, to me, is, is my revival, he is my personal revival, every time I see him show up in a situation where he said a thing, when he said it, and he's saying it now, and he speaks it through, I'm like, man. That is a long-lasting fruit. That is a long-lasting, life-changing word from the Lord. Amen? Every time he says a thing, my suggestion is for you to find out why he said it, where it is in the scripture. A lot of times he quotes Old Covenant. Amen? And where it is, find it, read it. Amen? Then go back to the Lord because he's the fulfillment of what he says. It's crazy, right? So let's get into it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Do not hesitate to leave it on the live chat. If you want it to be personal or private, inbox me from any of the social media platforms that you hear this from or you see this from. Amen. Um, and um, you could always, if you're into social media like that, you know, you could always at Sell Our Radio Network or at DJ Sam Rock or at Soul Winners and you'll literally find me all my social media handles, right? If you do it in a search engine. So that's the easy way to do it. If all else fails, if that's too much, right, work, just go to live. That's so winners with a Z dot org. You'll find me there. You have your own platform um, that we could connect there as well. Amen. So let's pray. After we pray, we'll share this out. 60 seconds to share this out. Just think about it. 60 seconds. If you had 60 seconds to share this good news about the Lord Jesus, amen, who would you want to share this with? Whether they're online or not, whether they're um on social media or not, because if they're not on social media, you can send them straight to live. That's so winners with a Z.org. OK, can we do that? Let's do it. Father, you are so kind to me and so gracious to all of us and so kind to all of us. Your mercy 
your truth, your love, your grace, everything, Lord God. You are the God of justice. So we all know as believers that there will be coming a day of justice, that every evildoer, every wrongdoer will have their day of judgment. And we are not to judge. But Lord God, thank you that you have sent in your word that we're coming back with you to judge the angels and whoever is left on this planet to be judged. Because you're coming with a new heaven and a new earth. And you're coming with your children, your resurrected children. Amen. And I thank you so much for your end time prophecies. I thank you so much that we are not orphaned. We're not abandoned. We're not put to shame. Um, we have your spirit in us as believers. And I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over our households, over our families, over our whole entire bloodline, that there be salvation and that there be lasting fruit in the lives of every single one of us. And Lord God, that you would give, give us health to our um, body, strength to our bones. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray this by faith over every single person that's listening and watching now who will listen and watch later. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're going to take 60 seconds, share this out. When we come back, we're going to dive right into Matthew chapter 5, verses 38. Amen, amen. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I literally only shared it to two people. Crazy because I was on the wrong page. But God is good. Um, hopefully you shared it out. Help me out. Amen. Share it because I blundered that one. So let's go for it. Let's go see what this deeper obedience is about from when I'm seeing the Lord speaking. Amen. And the beautiful thing about when we read scripture, um, you might get a different revelation. It's, I have to face it. I'm not the teacher. The Lord Jesus is the teacher. Amen. He's the rabbi, the chief rabbi. So I might see something. You might see something. Amen. Um, but we could agree on this, that Jesus said it. <laughs> Very important, right? Oh, I don't know if you interpreted that right, Sam. It doesn't really matter. It does matter because if I'm way off, you love me, right? So you're going to let me know, listen, you even read the wrong scripture, Sam. Like You're not going to just amen me and hallelujah me after me, right, if I'm saying something crazy. So I'm covered by you, right? I'm covered by you. Um, but this deeper obedience that we're going to see Jesus speaking, we just have to agree that he said it because we read it in the scriptures. Amen. And we could start from there and Jesus will continue to teach his word to us. So let me get this on the screen for those who are watching, those who are listening. You're going to hear me uh, repeat word for word uh, from these chapters and verses. Amen. So Jesus said what? This is number 22 on the morning Devo. Amen. Matthew 5, 38, 42. Amen. Let me get to the scripture here. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said. See that? He's talking of the previous covenant. You have heard that it was said. This is a fact. Jesus is saying this, this has been said. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, see the but? But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. Drop the mic. That's a truth bomb right there. Rock my world. And it's rocking my world again every time I see that. I'm like, what? But I say to you, verse 39, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And 
if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, there's a, a footnote there. A tunic uh, was a, a garment that they wore in those days. Um, that's what the A is there for. I didn't think it was um, going to change anything up, but I just wanted to explain that. Let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you, forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Wow. This is so full of ideas, concept, principles, and commands that I don't know about you, but it's totally opposite of what I would do, right? In the natural man, the natural woman, right? If you're a woman, you're a natural. And if you want to roll up as a woman in their natural state, not your supernatural state, you're going to do the eye for an eye. Or they hurt me, I'm going to hurt them. They did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. And in my natural, right, fleshly desire wants to do an eye for an eye to this very day. But I'm not in my natural man anymore. I'm in my supernatural nature. We have the divine nature of the Lord now. That's why but he says, but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. Right? Don't resist. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Um, that's deeper than I have time for. Because people actually think, and I've seen this done. Um, I've seen a, a, a preacher. He was in another country, which I'll name, leave unnamed. And it's just all footage. You can really see it. And he went to a, a country that's pretty much from another faith. And they don't really welcome Christianity, Christ, or anything like that. But he was invited to one of those universities out there. And this literally happened. Someone mocked him, went on stage, slapped him. And he said, "Give me, you have to give me your other cheek. Slapped him on the other cheek. Um, that he made him, for whatever, whatever even strip his clothes. I want your clothes. I want your trousers. I want... And he did it, man. He was humiliated in front of all those students. But he did... He literally did this. He did not resist the evil. Um, and he allowed this person to slap him on the right cheek, then turn the other cheek. And because this person was mocking the scripture and wanted to see how much this teacher, this professor, believed in his faith. And he said, give me your clothes now. The Bible says you have to give me your clothes. He gave him his trousers. So he was left them up there in his underwear in front of all those people. He was angry. Yes, of course he was angry. He wanted to retaliate. Yes, he wanted to retaliate. And this is all live footage. Uh, I would have to find a video for you if um, you want to see it for yourself and send you the link. He said he was humiliated, angry. So he left the stage, Left, went back to his room, and started crying or weeping to the Lord. Why, Lord? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? Why would you let me be humiliated like that? Right? Honest. Like, I would have said the same thing. I said, man, Lord, like, that was embarrassing, humiliating. So, started asking the Lord questions and praying, trying to regain his composure, um, change his clothes, obviously. And then this is the beautiful thing that happened out of this. As soon as he opened the door, there were hundreds of students asking him for forgiveness. Hundreds of students saying, listen, that's not how our religion rolls. Don't let that be an example of our religion. Don't, don't let the abuse of our religion decide for him that the religion is evil. And there was hundreds of students asking him to forgive him. Because he really worked this scripture out. I don't know if I would have did it, ladies and gentlemen, but he did. And I'll use him as an example. And this comes out of Exodus chapter 1, verses 23 to 25, where the word of the Lord says, But if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life. So what the scripture says. I don't know why we would back down or back out of what the word of God says. Because we have the fulfillment of the word of God, which is Jesus. And he will help us through this. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. In our culture, we would call this tick for tack. 
You do this to me, I'm going to do it right back. You say this to me, I'm going to say it right back. This right here, the law right here, is really flesh. It's an act of the flesh. You harm me, I harm you. You kill somebody. Um, and I watch a lot of Kung Fu movies, right? And the Kung Fu movies is 90% about revenge. Like, I'll avenge my family's, uh, my dad's death, my mom's death. And when I find you, I'm gonna, you're going to repay. And if you, in other words, if someone will kill their family, this is the Kung Fu movies. I'm not saying this is the culture. The Kung Fu movies that I've seen, if you kill somebody's family member, um, they'll start learning an art of martial arts and they'll learn it, then go kill somebody and their family member too. Because it was an eye for an eye. If there, was, if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And that's what Jesus was saying. He says, you heard that said, but I say, but I say, see that verse 39, but I say. So what is Jesus saying? He says, what you heard in the Mosaic law, the old, old covenant, you heard it and it's true. He's not denying that it's there, but he is God. The fulfillment of that word. And he says, but I say. Only Jesus could do that. If he's not God, then what is he doing? But he is God. And that's a deeper obedience. Amen. To do the but what I say part. That's a deeper obedience. People will obey the law of Moses, right? But then Jesus shows up. He says, but I say. That is that that should have you thinking if you're a person out there right now that you're like, how does Sam and all the rest of those Christians think that Jesus is God? There's no there's no evidence of that. that that's a big time evidence right that what we just read, <laughs> what we just read is a big time evidence that Jesus is claiming um, to be the fulfillment of those old covenant scriptures. Matthew 5, 38, 42. Read chapter five of Matthew, the whole thing. Just in case you don't, you think I'm taking this out of context. And then when you know that it's from the law that he's quoting, amen, he's endorsing it. He's not saying it's not there. He could have easily said, you heard it, but that's not true. It never, it never meant that. No, he said, you heard it said, eye for an eye, foot for foot, wound for wound, stripe for stripe, life for life. You've heard it. It's in the scriptures. Jesus is not denying it. That's why I'm not denying it. That's why you shouldn't deny it. It's there. But you know what the beautiful thing about it is? We're not there anymore. We're not under the old covenant law. The principles remain. And even that, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've heard it say, but the principles remain, Sam. They're eternal principles. Are you living eye for an eye, tooth for tooth? Are you living under that law still? Because if you are, um, I'm going to kind of like distance myself from you. Because if I offend you <laughs> or if I do something wrong, man, you're going to come after me, right? You're going to pick up your sword and try to chop my head off spirit- spiritually. But we're not under that no more because Jesus said, but I say. See that? So either he's saying, wait a minute, that's not like that anymore because I'm telling you this now. Or he's saying, no, it's the same way. Um, even if I... Try to change it, it's still going to be the same. No, he didn't say that. But he said, but I say. You've heard it that way, but I say. This is why it's important to us to see what the Lord say for ourselves with our very own eyes. We hear it. We read it. Right? We absorb his truth into our life. So that way, if something comes around our way that's speaking something different, or we hear somebody speaking about a different Jesus or a different gospel, we're going to be like, where's that coming from? And a lot of people would challenge us, believers, brethren, sister, sister in the word. They'll, they'll challenge us with the old covenant testament. Have you noticed that a lot of people who challenge our faith, have you noticed that they go to the old covenant? They go to the book of Leviticus. Oh, you say this is a sin, like if we're saying it. And then they'll go, but what about this? I thought you're not supposed to eat this. And I I thought you're not supposed to do this. I thought you're not, according to Leviticus. And they go to Leviticus. They'll go to all the laws, all the rules and regulations. You know why? Because they don't know who our fulfillment of the law is. They don't know who fulfilled the law. They think we're still under the law um, 
because they don't know. But we are under the fulfillment of the law. The lawgiver is a fulfillment of it. His name is Jesus. They don't know Jesus. That's what they're basically saying. Oh, you Christians, you're always judging us. And they don't know that who the ultimate judge is. Right? So, Jesus made it clear. said, the world is going to hate us because they hated him first. Unfortunately, there's still haters of Jesus out there. They don't know him. Because how can anybody who knows Jesus possibly, possibly hate him other than Satan, the devil, and all his fallen angels? Um, they, they, they did like a, they bowed to hate the Lord and his creation, you know, and they lost that battle. That war is already lost. Jesus won the war, ladies and gentlemen. So it's like, are we under both covenants? Some will say, yeah, you know, we can't forget about the old covenant as if Jesus said that or I said that. No one's saying to forget the old covenant. Jesus actually endorses the old covenant. He just did it. Matthew chapter five, right? 38 to 42. He just told us that you've heard it said it's there. It's in the scripture. Then I took you to the scripture where it's at. We read it, right? No denying that. But it's not my but. It's Jesus saying, but I say, that's a God move. Amen. So you heard it. You saw the law. You're under the law. To the people he was talking to, must have been the Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, um, the Jews who were under the Mosaic law, who were thinking that that's, that that's what they were supposed to do. And Jesus didn't say, you're not supposed to do it. But he says, there's something going to be even deeper. You're obeying you're being obedient to the law, but Jesus said there's something deeper. I want you to hear this deeper obedience. Because which one was harder? Which one was harder? What well, we read in Exodus, like, just go for it, man. If they hurt you, you hurt them. Is that hard? Because our flesh will be all over that all day, every day. Or oh, you say something to me, you curse me, I'm going to curse you back out. The flesh is on that all day, every day, if you're living in the flesh. But if you're living by the Spirit... You're not supposed to resist either evil people. Um, you're supposed to work this thing out according to the scriptures. Now, I'm not going to, Jesus said it. I'm not going to say, I'm saying for me personally, that's going to be really, really hard to get slapped, turn my other cheek slapped, give them my, my clothing. Um, the beggars that are asking for something, that's not, that's not hard for me at all. Amen. As a matter of fact, I learned early in my in my walk with the Lord to always have cash on hand, so that when when I see people who are in need out there in the street, that I have something to give monetarily, or I could go to a, a restaurant and give food for those who are who are begging for food. If you've seen them, I've seen them too, and I'm not going to to lie in front of this camera or uh, speak through this mic lies. Sometimes I pass them by. Um, for whatever selfish reason, it could be time, I don't have time, or it could be because I see them all the time and it looks like it's organized homelessness. I don't know if you know that there's people out there who are practicing or together. I call it organized homelessness. I've heard, I've literally asked questions to these people and some of them are out there and they don't really have to be out there. I'll give you an example. Years ago, you know, I used to be young. I know a lot of people say, oh, Sam, you're getting older, man. But I used to be young. Thank you, Jesus. And I used to work in this um, supermarket in Lower Manhattan, um, in the university place area. It's around New York University, right? It was called um, D'Agostino. And I used to deliver groceries. And I used to also do what we call counting cans. Because they in New York, I don't know if they still do it. I haven't been out there in a while. They used to give you five cents for each can or bottle, like recycled bottle or whatever. And we would count it and give you cash for it. There was this lady named Ginger. She smelled like all the cans she used to bring. She used to bring a whole lot of cans and bags of cans and bottles. And we used to have to count it. Everybody, when she was coming, everybody would leave Sam. Here comes Ginger. So I got to know her. Um, and she just smelled like, you know, whatever she picked up. So for like a year, you know, me and Ginger, we used to conversate. She had a funny way of speaking. She had an accent and with a high pitch. So, um, you know, 
at first I used to make fun of her. I wasn't saved, so you know, forgive me. But I used to make fun of her at first, and then when I got to know her a little better, I started respecting her more and stopped making fun of her. That wasn't I knew in my conscience that was bad. But anyway, make a, make a long story short. One time, so I used to count cans. So you should always be out there getting cash for cans and bottles, recycles. So one time I got a delivery, and I was like, "Oh wow, this is." In a ritzy ditzy condominium area, so I was like, I was excited because I was like, I met some famous people in Lower Manhattan that lived in those condos, and uh, I went to this one condo. I was like, man, um, okay, it was like I think it was the penthouse, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was the penthouse of this building. And when I walk up there, knock on the door, groceries. Guess who opens the door? Ginger, the so-called beggar. And the one who was um, getting cans, I said, time out. I said, Ginger, is this your place? She was like, yeah, with the same accent, same voice. But she was cleaned up, right? She didn't smell. And she was, I thought she was out of her mind. She was in her right mind. So I was like, so why do you, you know what I mean? Like, my question was like, why do you collect cans and, you know, give this perception that you're homeless and you're actually rich? I don't, she says, I don't think I'm rich. I just think I'm, I'm lucky because she didn't believe in, I don't think she believed in God. She said, I think, think I'm lucky and I want to be um, cleaning the environment up. So she was literally on a mission to clean the environment, environment up. I know another brother in Christ that's like that. Um, brother Maurice, shout out to you. Maurice likes to um, make sure everything gets recycled. Amen. Bless your soul. But um, yeah, so I learned from an early age that, you know, there are people out there um, that practice this organized homelessness, or maybe they're just trying to recycle things and they look homeless, um, but some of them are not um, broke. Some of them, just in my own experience. So um, I kind of I kind of like to see and notice um, things about some people who are out there begging and saying they're homeless. And if you look at them, they have a $300 watch on, they have the latest shoes, their jeans are not that dirty. You know what I mean? So... That's just me. I'm very observant. Uh, sometimes I'll I'll just pass those guys by. But, you know, you could know a genuine one when you see one. Anyway, that was my story on it. I hope it helps you out as an example of what Jesus is saying um, to do. Amen. And so it's challenging. I'm not, I was going to say some of it is challenging, but I think the whole passage where he says from the part, he says, but I say, it's challenging, but it's the right thing to do. The Lord says, do it. It's the right thing to do. That professor that was in that country um, that really wasn't for Christianity and Christ, and he was humiliated in front of all the students, um, God caused that to soften the hearts of the students uh, to ask for forgiveness. And from that point on, you have to watch the video, but I think from that point on, he got the message of the gospel across more powerfully than he had you know, written his outline and his message because he was the example of what Jesus asked of him to do. Even though that student was mocking the scriptures, now he actually saw it demonstrated. And that demonstration was a demonstration of love and humility and humbleness. And it changed the student's hearts. Changed the student's hearts. So I hope you get something good out of this. I know God's word is always good. What Jesus says is always right and true and just and holy. So Matthew chapter 5, read the whole thing. Amen. And if you want, you can read Matthew, um, Exodus chapter 3, I believe it was, the whole thing as well. Um, so that, oh, no, ex, I always say at chapter 3, Exodus chapter 21, Exodus chapter 21, and um, read it for yourself. So that way you can find out the true message behind what Jesus said. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always, always remember this, that no matter what you might think, God is good. Peace.